Welcome to episode two of Lemuria in Space. In this episode, we cast apostasy and capture a false prophet. Check it out. Negative one. A false prophet was gained. Let's check out how it went down. Priests are bad news for our empire, but check out how many ghosts we got. Many fall in these battles, including that shade right in front there, but it'll be worth it for that prophet. What's this guy? False prophet. Is an expert leading people from his true face by author altering it just a little. His falls are fanatics and he can't gouge more of them constantly. Wow. So he's a Dominion monster. No, not a Dominion monster summer. He's just a regular monster summer. He summons dudes. Plus. Stealthy, heretic. So this guy, you want to send him out front. You want to go send him to the enemy base and get rid of their dominion. Let's see if I can use this guy. Stealthy, 40%. You don't want him where a patroller's are at, though. He's not stealthy enough. What's this heretic? Leads people away from the true faith and lowers dominion in the province. A value of 5 guarantees a removal of 1 point. Lower values mean there's a lower chance. Values above 5. Wow. So he can't remove 1 per month. Guaranteed. I'm going to guess it's like 70% something. 4 is like 80. I don't know the exact math. Still pretty good. We can now combat enemy dominion with this heretic. We can also keep him as a trophy. But that's another option, but no, I'm going to use him. His guys that he summons aren't good enough to keep him around. He could preach. He could summon dudes. He turns into a reanimal priest at the end of the turn. I checked it. But let's watch the battle. Yeah, that's what he came for, right? To see another battle. Watch this shade do some damage. Uh-oh. We're getting banished. Okay, maybe we shouldn't zoom around too much. It hurts your eyes. They get shot down to a javelin fire. And look, we got some province defense. Or... I have no idea where these barbarians came from. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, that's province defense. Yeah. And... We capture him. We caught, cast apostasy a few times, and he becomes ours. Let's check him out. New trophy. Nine hit points. Reanimator Priest. Monster Summoner. We're going to send him out on the front lines and be sneaky. Let's get him over there. Turn one move. Turn two move. Oh, wait. Can we do this? Alt. Then three. Then where do we want to go? Are the Gartha or, Shin or Shinyama? Uh. I think I'm going to send him. Um, I'm gonna check whose dominion looks scariest. I can't tell. This looks like drain. I don't know if drain's any good. I think it boosts magic resistance, so that's actually good for us. I'm gonna send Shinyama. Maybe, mostly to scout. We don't have any scouts on the front line yet. So he's going to go this way and this way. Good luck. This is a stealth mission. We're going to name you... Let's rename this guy. Solidus. Snakus. Prophet form. Solid Snake Prophet form. The false prophet. I would give him a cardboard box, but I don't know how to craft that. Maybe a better stealthy cape? I don't know if I can make that. Let's look at my best dude and see if we can make anything cool. We don't have any construction, so we can't, really can't make anything. We could give him this. Skull Talisman. Hmm. Does he need a Skull Talisman? Give him some undead command. We can give him some shadows to follow him around. Let's check his undead leadership. Does he need it? He has some. 
Yeah, he has an undead leadership. I'll give him some sneaky ghosts. Let's see, what's the sneaky ghosts? These guys are stealthy. We could give them some of these, but they're trash. We gotta get better ghosts. These guys are stealthy. These would be good. But they're only paralyzed. I right, got some stealthy ghosts. Stealthy ghosts. Hmm. Maybe in this raiding as well. Deep enemy territory. Be a heretic stealth raider. Yummy. Hmm. I don't have any good plans. We need to get those ghosts online. If only we had some more good dudes. Like, what spirits can they call? Apparitions, are they stealthy? Let's check my apparitions. Where are some apparitions? In this army? They appear to have died. There's a shade dude. Oh, and it makes these guys. They're stealthy as well. And they're prop. They're sacreds. Nice. He generates sacreds. That's a good deal. Hmm. I'm gonna give him this guy. He's gonna be a leader of ghosts and of men. All in one huge group. They're all stealthy. I like it. Snake, your first mission. Decrease the viability of their dominion. Take their lands. Slaughter their wives. Make sure they cannot produce any more food. Be the herald of our god, Hades. Let me show you our god again. 260 health points. Two dumb wounds, but they don't matter. Limp, doesn't matter. Combat speed, attack defense. Look at his attack defense. It's terrible, but look at his strength. It's pretty good. Lots of seed strength. Doesn't matter for a single unit, but... Cool. I'm just delaying because I don't know what to do next. Hmm, I should stop recording. No, we will continue. Let's make sure it's recording. Oh my god, it's been seven minutes. What is, what's happened from the seven minutes? We got a new guy, Death Stink. Wow, he does stink of death. What a smelly man. He's got air. He makes big gas. Hmm, do we need air gems? Do we send him out to find sites? No, we need a guy staying here to cast more stuff while this guy researches. So they're both going to research. Because we need that beautiful enchantment 5. One more turn. One more turn and we'll have Horde of Skeletons. Turn after that, Rigor Mortis. But we don't have Death 4 in any of our mages out there. We don't really want to send Death 4 out for Rigor Mortis. Unless we see a huge army. Then we'll pull back and cast Rigor Mortis on him. And probably get him in a communion so we can do that with our big mages. Yeah, we just want Horde of Skeletons for this guy. Alright, let's look at our commanders. We got a guy here. People everywhere. A lot of work to do. Tell you what. I'm going to pause recording and come back to you. See you in a bit. I'll see you in a bit now. Looky, looky at this. So many troops. <laughs> Prepare to get wrecked. One army's going north, one army's going south. Let's see what happens. This is part three of episode one. Let's check this out. We got some events. We found four blood slaves. That's pretty good out of 17 guys. Uh, shit, that's bad. We're gonna have to check that out later. Right now. We got an arena match! Yo, 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 yo! Let's see! Aretha attacks man! Who they got? Let's check out their combatants first. First, we have, in the blue corner, the judge! He is a patrol bonus! Mundane researcher, who is feeble-minded. Oh, Looks like they just want to throw this guy away. Looks like he got experience in combat, though. And he is equipped with a dagger that does 2 damage plus strength and has a length of 1. 
Or attack of one. No length. Zero. Length of zero. That's the worst length you can get, but... Okay. He'll have to get right on top if he wants to do any damage. He has zero protection. Eight attack and eight defense. Looks like this old man is going to... Well, this middle-aged man is about to get his day wrecked. Bye. This, the Arethian commander. He's a formation fighter and is a poor amphibian. He is also feeble minded. I'm guessing everyone gets feeble minded from coming here. Yes, by the slave caller. My bad. Let's look at the slave caller. Gives you assassin patience, which is good on assassins. Gives you morale, which is good on fighting if you want to just throw people at him. That's good in assassins too, so this is good for assassins. I guess I should have sent an assassin here, but I don't have any assassins to send. I just have that one prophet who is a sneaky dude. Well, good thing we sent a guy that doesn't matter. Alright, let's watch this battle. This guy's got average stats. He's like an inch better, but he's got a pearl blade. Let's check this blade out. Attack 5, or damage 5. Slashing and piercing. With a bit of magic damage. Wow. That's a pretty good, awesome weapon. And his protection is 18, so he's barely going to get hit. Alright, what's your bets, folks? Odds are 10 to 1. That's my guess. They have about equal stats, but this guy's got to get super lucky. More like 20 to 1. 900 to 1. 15 to 1. Alright. Let's go. Who will win? Our fighters close in. Getting closer and closer, inching to that final step. Who will get the first strike? Oh, it's trading blows. Oh, kill. Nice. Decisive combat. Struck down one blow. And the Reefin Commander is our winner. Looks like the forces of the man lost this fight. Next, we have Bogris attacking Midgard. Who do we have here? Oh my god, we got a fan, y'all. These things are tough. It's glamour. It's an elfer. It's sacred. It's not sacred here, though. So it's not going to get its blessed. That's the good thing. But it has a javelin. It has no good protection. But look at that defense skill. How is he going to be able to hit this guy? Let's see who he's fighting against. Wow, the fast. We got a Bogart here. And he has pretty good protection, pretty good defense. This is an equal matchup, I think. I think it's going to come down to, well, the lane strength's not going to hit the through the glamour. So I won't be able to rely on that. These are two sacred units fighting each other, both cavalry. It's going to come down to whether that he can pierce through the enemy's defense skill. I'm thinking the Van Yard's going to win this. I'm going to say two to one odds. In favor of Van Yarl. And struck down in a single blow. He went right through that glamour. Wow, I lost that bet. I wasn't betting on any of them, but if I had taken all those odds, I'm going to lose 50 bucks. Oh my god. I'm glad I didn't bet on this. Struck down in a single blow. These battles have been decisive. Next, we have Agartha versus Utgard. Oh my god, who's this giant? That's going to matter for hit points. It's going to take more than one hit to strike this guy down. He's an inspirational leader. He's snow move, cold resistant, resistant to the shock, but no magic, so it's going to be hard to get the right weapon. There's no king in Jotunheim, and Jarl's rule of the land. He's a religious as well as a martial leader. He can perform the sacrifice and offering the gods of the waking lord. Let's see, he has lots of strength. He's going to do 29 damage. He gets one hit, it's over. What a hero. 18 protection. Nice shield. Does the minus one to his defense, but it's still about 10. Encumbrance is a little high, but this battle won't last this long. Let's see this little guy. It's a necromancer. Why did they send him here? What a waste of a troop. I have no doubt to this. This is 101. I'm putting all my money on this guy. 
There's no way he loses. Strike him down. Make me money. Nice. First hit. He's weakened. He took another wound. He lost an arm in that strike. Oh, now he's just fighting with his right fist. Well, his left arm is gone. He can't even wield his core staff anymore. Punch him. Yeah. What are you going to do? Hit him for one damage? I doubt it. I'm going to make some good cash off this battle. Nice. That's some gold for me. I have good fare for this guy, but he's yet to fight my champion. Alright, which battle is that? Let's try not to get the right thing. That was Ag Agartha with her Ketonian Necromancer footing Yukard's jaw. Next, we got these two. Bogus versus Marignan. We have our reigning champion, Boris the Bogatier, versus some missionary. Will he be able to bring the strength of his god to this fight? No. This place is without gods. He is recuperation, though. So if he survives this bout, he might recuperate from his wounds and continue to fight unscathed. No, he got crit down by a land strike. What a good s soldier. Oh my god. Next battle. Atlantis attacking the guard. Alright, who do you think you have your bets on for this one? For this one is a mage with three water jams. Wow, what a waste. Why did they put that on him? He is enlarged? I'm guessing that's part of their bless. Enlarged seems to take effect even though you're not blessed. Sometimes, on their leaders. That's the only reason I'm guessing he's enlarged. I don't see any items on him. That's the only reason I'm guessing he's enlarged. So they are pretty equal. Five versus four. Forty health versus thirty-five. Of course, this guy's only got a quarter staff. Hmm. I don't feel good for this guy. I'm going to say this is a 7 on 1 in favor of the Jarl. Pick your bets, folks. Bets are over. He got the land of the first strike. And he's cut down. Yeah, this guy. Maybe 7 on 1 is too favorable for this guy. He should have gotten 30 on 1. There's no way that mage could stand up to this Jarl in close combat. Next, we have Shinyama. No, that's the next one's Shinyama. Let's see who this is against. Right here, this red line. Utgard versus Bogris. Oh, the two reigning champions. Let's see, this guy's down three hit points. He, some people got lucky hits on him. But this guy, all he needs to do is land that land strike and then follow up with a hoof attack. I have good hope for this uh, Bogris and champion. Yes, land strike hit. Now. Can he finish the job? One more hit. His half, health is down to half. He just needs to finish him off. Oh, another good hit, but not strong enough. He must continue to strike him down. I'm guessing that was the hoof, because he only did six damage. But it did break through his armor. Another eight damage. Ooh, Ukar's routing. His morale's... Wait. Yes. He's routed. He's has suffered an HP route. Is he willing to continue to fight? But he's continuing to fight. It says his armies are routed. I'm guessing he's not actually routed, though. His morale's not actually broken. He's just saying that. But I'm guessing... No! What a turnaround! I didn't even say the odds, but I'm guessing it was one-to-one. -one. They're both equally strong. Oh my god, with a single decisive strike, he cut through that horseman there. But down to three hit points, he will not be able to continue on this battle much longer. One lucky hit will kill him. But that was decisive. Wow. Rim Yug the Jotun Jarl. Congratulations. Next, we have a battle versus Shinyama here. Belay versus Jomen. Oh, Shinyama's middle age. Right. My bad. We're still recording. Excellent. We have the Traitor Prince versus the Prophet of. Showman, Joman. That means he is blessed. He comes in with his god's ability. Decay weapons. I have no idea that that's going to do anything. That will do disease, I think. Poison resistance is not going to do anything. Blood surge. Blood surge activates after a kill, or does it just activate? I think it activates after a kill. That's not going to do anything. On aging. I'm thinking of decay weapons all he's got. Let's look at decay weapon. 
Hmm. That could do some damage. Okay. Let's put some odds together. He's got a protection 21. Average stats. I think it's about equal, but it's hard to say. This guy's insane. He's got a two-handed weapon. Hmm. I'm going to say the odds are... He's got a hat. That helmet's helping him out. I'm saying it's a profit. I'm going to say it's two to one in favor of the profit. I'm not going to put my money... On, no, I'm going to put my money on the profit. Will you win this prize? Let's see who wins. Go for the profit. Okay? Landed hit but did no damage. Couldn't get past armor. It's profit, though. Oh, you did some damage. Seven. But it's it's going to be a lot of strikes to get through. He just needs to land in one. Maybe I shouldn't have put any money on this guy. Oh, there's one down. He's now weakened from this. He is bleeding now from his meteorite trident. It's pretty much over, folks. He took zero bleed damage, but it will add up. This battle is already decided. Zero bleed damage again. Oh, now he's decaying. He's been hit. He will die within minutes. Let's see his age. He is pretty large at max age, so it might take a while for him to die. They're both now injured. One is bleeding and one is decaying. Oh, it's finished. But he is decaying. And unless that goes away, he's going to be really weak for the next fight. I do not have hope for these heroes. Both of them are weakened. Next, we have, let's see, Ukar versus Valet, our two champions. Let's see, the Decay is gone, but he did suffer, oh, Battle Fright. That's not going to matter too much, but that's pretty sad. He's scared. He's known the fear of death, and he's fighting his three health, health Jarl. I'm afraid their health is so equal, it's hard to say who's actually going to win this. And he, the first hit's going to decide it, so I'm going to base it off the combat speed. I'm going to say it's 5-1 to one in favor of the Jarl. He just has the speed to get that first hit in. And he's dead! Oh! The length! The length of that weapon really helped out. The length of three really helped out on that repel and attack. I don't know if he repelled, actually, but let's just say he repelled his attack and stabbed him right in the face. Well, he's going to move on to the next round. And that's against my champion. All right. Now, not to hype this up, but he is fighting an invisible man-hate. The hater of man. He is a spirit of ancient Slayerian centurion that has been brought from the underworld to lead the undead legions. If he wins this bout, he will continue to rain terror on the world of man. He has 48 hit points. Average stats. Well, above average stats. Good protection. His magic resistance is pretty poor. Uh, but really, he's invisible. How are you going to hit this guy? He's got a core blade. All he needs to hit, do is hit you once. And you'll be bleeding. Plus, he's ethereal. So it's going to be hard to hit with a non-magical weapon. Let's check if your weapon is magical. I believe it is. Okay, it's an equal matchup. He can be hit. But I'm afraid this is going to be an easy win for my guy. I've seen the stats. He just needs to hit him once. But it's more equal than you think. Nope. He crushed. Bang! That's it! We win! Yo! Man, hey! Let's look at the death arena dash match. Well, congratulations to Manhunt, the Lemur champion who won the death match arena in the name of Hades. God of Lemuria. Great God of Earth. Gatherer of the dead. Grand Vizier of the Land of Woe. He who loved not the light. The champions tried it, was awarded his prize. Congratulations, man hate. Let's check out that trident. Did he pick it up? Yes, he did. He cannot get rid of the champion's trident, but let's check it out. It is a two-handed luck weapon. Gives you command. We're going to need a command leader. Gives you quickness. Double attack. Excellent. And it has pretty good length. Pretty good attack and defense bonus. Gives you two attacks per turn. So that means four attacks per turn? That would be insane. 
<laughs> Man hate the hero of the ch- people. I'm so glad I gave him this helmet. Our, this was gifted to him directly from our god. It was forged by the Cyclopses in the deep earth, specifically for our pretender. And our pretender on death felt like he was no longer worthy of the helmet, and so passed it on to this champion, and so that he may cause fear in the mortal minds as he reigns terror with his undead leadership of 120, which is not high enough. But he has lots of leadership of regular people. That's a shame. I wish his command also passed to undead. But we'll just keep it. Let's see, what happened to that coral blade? Real quick. Goes back on the treasury. Nice. Excellent. Well, that'll do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. What an exciting arena bout. We'll see if there's more arena and then he'll be returning as a reigning champion. But one last look at our world. War on Sh- uh, Yomi... Sh- J- called Joman. Joman and Agartha is soon to happen with our army of hundreds of ghosts arranged at this castle. Blood hunting goes apace. Check out all these commanders on blood hunt. Unrest is going through the roof. Hopefully some man can put an end to this unrest. Or this province will forever be lost to the angry hordes of mobs who cannot stand their women being touched by our filthy hands in the name of blood. And Hades continues his dark research. We actually have a lot of death champs. We're going to have to figure out what to do with those. Anyway, this has been Kaiser Nike. I hope you have a wonderful day. And let's pause this.